We're just going to take some time to look at CSS grid terminology because it's important just to understand some of the wording around what goes into each section. One of the first things to look at is cells. Cells are the individual elements that go into each of the grid. So in this case, there's a 12 column grid. That 12 column grid has 12 cells going across each of the rows that we see here and coming down all the way. So the cells exist individually inside of all of those spaces. The next thing we can think about is the areas. These are known as areas because they span more than one cell. So the one at the top, column one, goes across 12 cells. It spans them, it is an area. That's what those are known as areas. So multiple cells linked together into one become an area. Next thing is pretty straightforward, columns, just as we would expect columns to be straight down, rows would be the same going straight across. So those are fairly standard and straightforward. Next area, however, is that the columns and rows are also called tracks. So uh, you'll hear that interchangeably done. And I misnamed the parts in between as tracks earlier on. And in fact, what they should be called is lines. So I, I made an error there. And what we see on the lines is that the line goes from one to 13 in this case, it starts at one. Normally computers start counting at zero and this is a slightly different way of doing it. So it can be slightly confusing at times. It goes one, two, three, four, five, up to 13 being the far side. So if you wanted this one to span 13, you would either have to do grid column end span 12, or you would have to say that it starts grid column starts at one and ends at 13 because they're the lines that it's referring to. I generally don't use the one slash 13. I find that more confusing. I'd rather just say that it spans 12 because it makes more sense in my mind. The lines also go down as well. So the lines do go both ways. It's not like they have different names in that respect.